Hey, what is going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be going over exactly how much dividend income I made in the month of March from a $20,000 dividend portfolio. And you can see we are currently looking at my dividend portfolio tracker in Google Sheets where we have a portfolio value tab, a dividend outlook tab, a dividend calendar, and a daily dividend calendar. So let's go ahead and jump into the analysis. If you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. Let's go ahead and start on our dividend outlook tab, which is the tab that everyone wants to see. And the first thing that I'll point out is my historical monthly dividend income. And for the big reveal, we can see that in the month of March, I made $61.13 in dividend income, and that is off of 13 different dividend payments. And we can see over about the past year what that growth has looked like. So you can see I actually did have a few big dividend months about a year ago, and that's when I held a pretty large position in AT&T. So you can see I had a month where I made $74 and $73 in dividend income. But I did sell out of my AT&T positions and kind of restructured my portfolio to focus more on dividend growth at the time. So you can see there was a little bit of a dip. And in July, we were sitting at about $53. We had a couple months trending downward. A big jump up in October, I had $98. And then we trended downward another two months. Then I had my first month in January where I was over $100 in dividend income. Now, the past two months have been just a little bit lower, and that is due to the timing of the companies that pay out my dividends. So I'm actually expecting my next month to be my highest amount of dividend income yet. So stay tuned for that video. If we come over here, we can see my expected yearly dividend income. I'm now, I've now reached one of my goals, which, which is over $1,000 in expected dividend income, which is a really great accomplishment. I think that'll help to start get the compounding effect into place. We can see my all-time dividend income from this portfolio is sitting at about $756. My average monthly dividends is $84. I'm trying to get that up to 100. My highest month of dividend income, which is what we just looked at, is about $103. Now, my current portfolio dividend yield is sitting at about 4.56%, and that's actually down about 1%, which is a pretty large jump, and that's due to some moves that I made over the past month. I thought there were some really great companies at good values, and I'll go into the new buys that I made this month in just a little bit, but you can see now the total dividend payments I received from this dividend portfolio is now sitting at 91. Now, if we look at my expected dividend income by industry, you can see that financials is making up by far the most of my dividend income, sitting at $365 yearly. I have a couple of other industries with pretty large amounts as well, such as consumer staples and real estate. Now, there are a few others worth noting. I've started to add more positions to my ETFs, which I will get into in just a little bit. Now, if we come over here and look at my yield on cost, you'll notice it fluctuates quite a bit. I do have a few pretty aggressive dividend yield positions, but I also have some more staple positions as well, such as Coca-Cola, KHC, J&J. &J. Um, but like I said, yes, I do have some aggressive positions as well. Typically, I do focus a little bit more on dividend growth, but I think depending on your time frame for what you're shooting for as a dividend investor, it can make sense to have some uh, more aggressive dividend yield positions as well. Now, if we come over here and look at this chart, we can see my expected yearly dividend income from each individual stock. And you can see there's a few stocks that do make up the majority of my dividend income. We have ACRE. Now, this is a REIT, and it is currently paying me over $100 a year in dividend income. We also have OHI, which is actually a REIT that I just made a review on on my channel a few days ago, so be sure to go check out that video, but it's currently paying me about $92 a year in dividend income. We also have Coca-Cola, which is paying me about $70. We have MO sitting at almost $70 as well. A few other companies with pretty high dividend payouts, Goldman Sachs Business Development at 62, and EPD $58. Let's go ahead and jump over and look at my dividend calendar. And this is actually a new tab that I have recently added to my spreadsheet. And I think it is extremely useful. I'll probably come out with a tutorial on how to add this to your dividend portfolio trackers very soon. But essentially what we're looking at is we can see what companies have paid me dividends in each month and what the total amount for each month is as well. And the reason that I really love this dividend calendar, it, it allows you to easily see your dividend growth over time. So for example, if we look at O, which is a REIT, 
we can see I reinvest all of my dividends. So we can see how that dividend has been growing over each month. We can see in January, O paid me $5.83. In February, after reinvesting dividends, it was $5.85. And in March, it was $5.87. So this allows you to see exactly how much the stocks have paid you in total over the year, your monthly totals, and it's gonna allow you to easily see which months they pay you dividends and the dividend growth. So this is a really great visualization that I'm so glad that I added to my portfolio. I think it will really help you better understand how your dividends are growing over time. Now, I also added a daily dividend calendar, just like I mentioned earlier. And essentially, this is just so I can see on what days I typically get paid dividends and I can record them. And so you can see we have our months listed here and our days of the months listed here. So we can see in the month of March, I was paid on the 1st, the 2nd, the 8th, 10th, 11th, 15th, 17th, 22nd, 24th, 25th, and the 29th. So let's see, that's around eight or nine days that I was paid in total. So that's pretty good. But let's go ahead and jump over to something that's important, which is my portfolio value tab. And let me go ahead and zoom out so we can look at all of this. And you can see my portfolio value over time. And we had a huge spike in portfolio value from February to March. And this is due to, I did add a lot of capital because there were some investments that I really wanted to make this past month, but my portfolio also saw some really nice growth. The market was down for a little bit halfway through the month, so I added a lot of capital and those positions have already been paying off really well. So you can see in March, my portfolio value was $19,872. And when we look back a year ago, it was sitting at about 7,649. So we have seen some really nice growth. Now, my current dividend portfolio value after adding more capital is $24,897. We can see we have seen some really nice gains this month. We are currently up 22.96%. And my unrealized gains, as well as dividends, is sitting at about $2,563 all time. Now, if we look at my value by industry, this is a really important chart to understand how your portfolio is diversified. And you can see my ETF position in recent months has actually been really low. That was something I was looking to increase. So you can see my ETF currently takes up about 25% of my dividend portfolio, which is about where I want it to be. Maybe I'll add a little bit more to it in the future, but I have drastically increased that position and I'm pretty happy with that and the price points that I was able to get into my ETFs. You can see financials is getting close to 25% as well. We have a few other large ones such as consumer staples and real estate as well. Both of those pay out pretty well in dividends, so I'm happy with those positions. Now on this chart, we can see my dollar and percent gain. And the blue lines is our dollar gain and the orange is our percent gain. And what just off a glance, we can see there's a couple stocks that have been by far my largest dollar gains. And one of those is Coca-Cola. I was able to get in at a great price about a year ago and I'm currently up over $547. If we look here, Microsoft, which is a position that I recently added, I'm actually up $395, which is really great for the amount of time that I've been invested into the company. And over here, we can see my value by individual holdings. And so Microsoft, currently one of my largest positions, sitting at about 15%. And then we have VFIAX, which is, I have it recorded as an ETF, and it's currently taking up about 13.4% of my entire dividend portfolio. But other than that, everything else is pretty well diversified. You can see Coca-Cola actually has a larger position than most of my companies. That's partly due to how much it has grown, but it takes up about 10% of my current portfolio. Now, if we jump over to my new buys, I'll show you exactly what companies I bought this month. I'll go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more for you. But you can see, Earlier this month, I bought Microsoft. I bought three shares at a price of $280. So that was $840 invested. I bought two spies at a purchase price of $420, which is another $840 invested. And then Microsoft had another dip and it went all the way down to $273. I absolutely love Microsoft at this price point. So I added a couple more shares. I wish I would have added even more, but that was $546 invested. And then I added VFIAX. I thought it was a very well diversified position, has a decent dividend yield, hoping to see some dividend growth, but I added $3,000 to that position. 
I'll likely add more to ETFs in the future as well. And you can see Apple went all the way down to 151. I thought that provided a pretty good buying opportunity. So I did add one share of Apple. And then INTC, I bought 10 shares at a purchase price of $44. And every single one of these positions is up drastically currently. So I'm pretty happy with the price points that I was able to get in at. If we jump over to my portfolio holdings, you can see, let's find Microsoft. We can see I'm currently up over almost 12% on my Microsoft position. Apple's up about 22%. So like I said, all these positions that I added in this recent month have done really well for me. So there you have it, guys. That's exactly how much dividend income I made in the month of March. If you have any questions or you'd like to be able to download this portfolio tracker, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.